Welcome to the online worship for Fort Hill United Methodist Church. What does it mean to prepare the way of the Lord? I invite you to hear these two readings, first from Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is a, like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. And from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Eteria, and Trachnitus, and Licinius ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And as, as written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Malachi prepared the way of the Lord. His collection of prophetic oracles contained in the book uh, that bears his name, the last book of the Old Testament, is a message about God's justice and holiness, about God's kingdom. John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord. His message about repentance is found in the first four books in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it provides the context for the opening message in the New Testament, a message about God's kingdom of justice and holiness and righteousness. In a devotional written by Landon Weldy when he was a sophomore in college, he wrote about John the Baptist preparing the way for the kingdom of God and what that means for us as followers of Jesus. I share with you what he wrote. I find it fitting that even before Jesus began his ministry, people were preparing for his coming. John preached about the arrival of the kingdom and baptized those who were willing. Now you might say, hold on. Now, what exactly is the kingdom of God? Is it a physical kingdom? Kingdom of horses? Well, not exactly. The definition I grew up with is that it is places and times where God's love and justice can be found. This means that every effort we make to make a positive impact on those around us, seeking justice, seeking peace, we are causing the will of God to be realized right now. John called the crowds to prepare the way of the Lord. Jesus wasn't going to do all the work by himself. The same is true today. I like how Landon describes and defines God's kingdom as places and times where God's justice and love can be found. I think that Malachi and John the Baptist would agree with this definition. I believe that Malachi and John the Baptist would agree that God's kingdom is defined by justice, righteousness, holiness. God's kingdom is not defined by geographical boundaries, but it is found defined by how people live in relationship with God and with each other 
It's the reason why they came preparing the way for the Lord. It's the reason why we are called to do the same. To consider the difference between the kingdoms that Malachi and John the Baptist talked about and the kingdoms of this world, I invite you to consider the reign of Louis XIV, the longest reigning monarch in the Western world. Louis XIV became the king of France when he was four years old. During his reign, the palace of Versailles was built at an enormous cost at that time of 150 million francs. His most memorable statement was, I am the state. He was known as the Sun King because he believed and he saw France as a kingdom that rotated around him or revolved around him like the planets revolve around the sun. He led France in several major wars and established and expanded the kingdom of France and its boundaries. He died at Versailles having reigned for 72 years. If you wish to see evidence of Louis XIV's reign, you can travel to Versailles. Now I invite you to, to contrast the reign, the, the, the reign of uh, Louis XIV with the kingdom that John the Baptist and Malachi talked about. It's a kingdom described by R.C. Sproul in the following. In 1990, he was invited to go to Europe for a series of lectures in Czechoslovakia and Hungary and finally in Romania. And he and those who were traveling with him were advised that when they got to the border with Romania to expect some rough treatment be prepared to be hassled, perhaps even to be arrested. And here's how he describes his experience when they got to the border. Sure enough, when our rickety train reached the border of Romania, two guards got on. They couldn't speak English, but they pointed for our passports, and then they pointed to our luggage. They wanted us to bring our bags down from the luggage rack and open them up. They were brusque and rude. That suddenly their boss appeared, a burly officer who spoke broken English, or at least some broken English. He noticed that one of the women in our group had a paper bag in her lap and there was something peeking out of it. The officer said, what this? What in bag? Then he opened the bag and pulled out a Bible and I thought, uh-oh, now we're in trouble. The officer began leafing through the Bible, looking over the pages very rapidly. Then he stopped and looked at me. I was holding an American, an American passport and he said to me, you know American. He looked at another person traveling with me and said, you know American. He looked at the others in the group and repeated the phrase, you know American. And then he smiled and said, I am not Romanian. But now we were quite confused, but he pointed at the Bible that he had that was from this woman. And that as he had looked through this Bible, he pointed out the particular text from Philippians chapter three, verse 20, which reads, our citizenship is in heaven. The guard was a Christian. He turned to his subordinates and said, let these people alone. They're okay. They're Christians. Well, as you can imagine, I said, thank you, Lord. This man understood something about the kingdom of God that our first place of citizenship is in the kingdom of God. Well, if you want to see evidence of an earthly kingdom, 
traveled to the palace of Versailles. If you want to see evidence of God's kingdom, then look at the person next to you, the person that you are called to live in right relationship with, in justice, in just ways, in holy ways, and then join with John the Baptist in Malachi in preparing the way for the Lord by how you live in relationship with that person. Preparing the way of the Lord. May God bless you as you live as a citizen of God's kingdom this day. I invite us to pray. O oh God, as we remember the message of Malachi and the message of John the Baptist, may we remember that you call us to be citizens of your kingdom and that you call us to live in ways that are just and righteous. In the name of the one for whom Malachi and John the Baptist prepare the way, the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. May God bless you as you prepare the way for the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.